What's up, nerds? Welcome back. Thank you so much for being here again. As always, my name is Nate in the Wild, and it is so good to see you. Today we're gonna to talk about noise, and I don't mean those annoying beeps that your camera makes when you use the self-timer function. I mean image noise, the kind of grain that you see when you do a long exposure. It can be caused by either high ISO or longer shutter speeds, but it's kind of been the bane of photographers' existence for 75 years now. And we have some really good techniques for combating it in post-processing, and I'd like to talk about them. The most obvious is to use one of the plugin tools like Topaz, AI makes a great denoise, Lightroom has an integrated denoise function. There's also the very old school version of stacking and blending multiple exposures to reduce noise. I wanna compare and contrast each of those options, find out which one is the easiest and which one is the best. Let's get into it. So last week I was in Arches National Park and I took this photo of the Milky Way, with some beautiful rock formations. I'm very happy with the composition. I love how it came out, but you can see on this foreground here a lot of noise and that's partially a function of it being a moonless night and the exposure necessary for the sky. So if you look at my unedited image here, the sky is correctly exposed for the amount of noise pollution that I have, but since there was zero moon, the foreground is essentially black. So after editing, when it's brightened up, you can see that the noise in the corners, in the dark areas, is substantial. And after using a couple different techniques, I was able to get an image that looks like this. As we zoom in, you can see that not only is there much, much less noise than the singular photograph I just showed, but there's also a lot of nice retained details. It actually came out looking really good. So diving into the techniques that I used, if you edit in Adobe Lightroom Classic, you may have noticed a denoise function down here on the right side. That is going to be the easiest option if you're already using this program. It's basically just a couple clicks and it's done. Let's do one of those so that we have a baseline. It's worth noting that this functions best on an unedited image. You wanna do this to the raw file. So I'm going to reset this edit and then click the denoise button. It processes for a second, it's going to come up with a bunch of options. I'm gonna leave it at the default of 50. In general, I find that the 50 is pretty good. It's the recommendation that the tool gives you and it's using AI, so it's analyzing your image and making this decision on the fly. So I'm just gonna click Enhance. After some processing time, we now have a denoised image that is ready to be edited. So since this was part of a larger series of images, I have others that are already edited. I can just copy and paste those settings to our new denoised image and we can compare and contrast. So now with those edits applied, we can see uh, that the image looks basically the same as it did before, but with significantly less noise. Now zooming in, you can see uh, this is more or less noise free, but as with almost everything AI related these days, it looks a little bit hallucinatory, uh, for lack of a better word. The way that the AI reduces this noise is it determines what is noise and what is the original image, and it reduces the noise, but in doing so, it basically has to reimagine the details that were obscured behind this artificial grain. Um, and you can see the result of that, like this rock and some of these bushes end up looking kind of the same, but to a human eye that has actually seen things in person, it doesn't necessarily look super realistic to me. Now, I will say this would be fine for posting on social media or showing to your friends. If all you wanna do is talk about how great your experience was on a trip, I think this is fantastic. But if you're trying to sell prints or document it, uh, I'm not a huge fan of that outcome. You could reduce the amount of noise reduction, but let's move on. Let's try a different option and see if we can get something a little bit better. So let's try Topaz Denoise AI. This program was written specifically for denoising 
low light images, high ISO images. Uh, and so I would expect it to do a fantastic job. Now it has a bunch of different options, standard, clear, low light, severe noise, and raw. I drug the raw image in here. So let's do the raw denoise. That would be the most effective option. I'm going to let it do its auto settings, make all the decisions for me. That's what this program is designed for. And then I'm going to save the image. Once that is saved, I want to drag it into Lightroom. It's a raw image. So I can simply add it to my catalog. And then once it's in the catalog, I can again copy all of the settings over to it. And we can have a great comparison. Okay, so this edit doesn't look exactly the same. Uh, we're or we're editing a denoised DNG of a raw image, so the copied and pasted settings aren't gonna look exactly the same, but it's enough to give us an idea of how this worked. So right off the bat, I can see uh, it left a lot of hot pixels, which I do find pretty surprising. You can see uh, it didn't get rid of all of those. I will say the, the details look, to me, significantly better. Uh, going back to the Lightroom denoise option, let me lower these shadows a little bit so that the exposure looks similar between the two. But I will say that it, there looks to be significantly less hallucination of details and significantly more authentic details, but that might just be because the denoising is a little bit less aggressive. Um, I don't think I like it more necessarily, but again, compared to the raw, it's definitely an improvement. I mean, both of these are better than the raw image in terms of the noise, but they seem to be hallucinating details, which is one of my least favorite things in photography. So now one other option with Topaz that's worth considering is to export the edited JPEG with no noise reduction and then apply that a noise reduction to the image in Topaz. This program functions better when you use a raw image, but you can do noise reduction on an edited JPEG and it actually is really good. So using the low light function here, it looks pretty decent, but not perfect. There is a severe noise option, and I think we should give that a try. Let's see what it looks like. Let's see what it does. I'm going to zoom all the way in. Let's go down to my favorite bush over here, and let's see what the hallucination of details looks like. Okay, so this looks good. Kind of, I would say. Uh, there's less hallucinated details and more, I think it does a better job of retaining the original details of the image, but that noise reduction is very splotchy and kind of weird looking. Um, this would probably be my preference of the three options we've seen so far. I think this is the best, but it's still far, far, far from perfect. So now let's get into the old school version. This is my personal favorite option, and that is to stack and blend and reduce for noise. This might end up being a little bit of a tutorial for both. I should probably do a standalone tutorial for this process on its own, but a quick rundown. I took 10 images. I had my camera on a tripod. I set the intervalometer. It took 10 identical images in the exact same location with the exact same settings. Here they are in a row. I'm going to select all of them and you simply right click, edit in, and then open as layers in Photoshop. You can also do open as smart object layers in Photoshop. I'm just gonna do open as layers in Photoshop. Once those are all open, you'll see that I have them here stacked up. These are just those individual images. Um, the move that we're gonna wanna do is select all of them, right click, Convert to Smart Object. And this is where opening as Smart Object layers will save you a little bit of time. I just wanted to show the full step. Now that it's a Smart Object layer, let's zoom in so we can watch this magic happen. So here's all the noise in this corner. 
So now that it's a smart object, you go to layer, smart objects, and then stack mode. Now mean and median will be your two best options. It's worth trying both to see which one you like. We're gonna start with mean. It'll process and basically the sensor noise here is randomized. So by stacking and blending multiple images, you're reducing the randomization of the noise and you're left with just the details because it's almost impossible with randomized noise for a speck of artificial grain of this sensor noise to overlay the same detail 10 out of 10 times. So you're more or less averaging out the noise and ending up with a beautifully clean image. So you can see now this is done. That is by far <laughs> the best of all four options here. Uh, the details are retained. This isn't nearly as splotchy. There's still a tiny bit of noise left, but very, very little. Let's do uh, median just to see the difference between them. Also looks great. They both look good. I'm happy with either. There's nothing to complain about. Now, the main thing to keep in mind with this is that it has averaged the entirety of the image. So for this, my camera's on a tripod. That's great. However, there is motion in this scene. The stars are moving. Well, I mean, technically the stars are moving. From our perspective, it's the earth rotating that makes them appear as though they're moving. You get the point. There's no need to get that nerdy with it. These act of stacking and averaging means that now your sky looks kind of ridiculous. So if you do this technique, you are going to have to do a sky replacement also. So just comparing again, this is the stacked and blended foreground versus the Lightroom denoise stacked and blended versus the Topaz AI denoise. I think the stacked and blended looks the best by far. So what I would do, what I do do is I stack and blend for the foreground. I get the foreground looking the way I want it. And then I just do a simple Photoshop sky replacement. There's a hundred tutorials out there for you if you're curious about how to do that, but it's very easy. It's actually as easy as just clicking edit sky replacement and then just putting your own sky in. Uh, there's also a bunch of different ways to do it, but I think the easiest option is to then take a single image from your, your sequence of images. You have 10 of them here that you stacked and blended to get a clean foreground. Just take a single one of these, do a very gentle denoise using the internal Lightroom one. You know, maybe instead of 50, take it down to like 25 because you don't want to lose too many stars. This is the Lightroom edit uh, where I thought the foreground didn't look great. The sky looks, I think, pretty good, but you can see that there's still a little bit of hallucination going on. There's still some areas where the stars and the noise were slightly deleted and you get these kind of weird like veins uh, that aren't real. It's kind of the program guessing. That's because this is a very heavy denoise we did on this. So reduce it to like 20 maybe if you wanna clean up the sky and then just take this single image sky and put it on top of your stacked foreground. It's very easy and you'll end up with a perfectly clean image like this one that has a stacked and blended foreground, a standalone beautiful sky and an overall great looking image edge to edge without too much noise. Personally, I think it looks beautiful. That's my recommendation. I think the stacking and blending, it's one of the oldest techniques in photography and it is honestly easier than ever with our digital tools we have. But to me, that's like a standalone winner. It looks so much better than the other two options. And you can even stack and blend and then run it through something like Topaz AI denoise because then there's much, much, much less noise for the, the AI program to have to worry about. And you're gonna end up with a flawlessly clean image.
That's how I like to do it. If you do it differently though, I would love to know how. So please leave a comment down below and let me know how you denoise your images. I'm always looking to learn. There's a hundred different ways to do all this stuff and I'm super curious. But in the meantime, thank you so much for being here and I'll see you next time.